How are you doing today? Are you excited about the word? Maybe excited, excitement is not the word. Maybe I should use the word prepared. Are you prepared for the word this morning? You know, God told Moses in Exodus chapter 19, he said, consecrate your people and and let them clean their clothes and get them prepared for on the third day, I'm going to come down from Mount Sinai and I'm going to meet up with your people. In other words, what God was saying is I want to come and be in the presence of your people, but I want your people to be prepared to meet up with me. Are you prepared this morning to hear the word of God? God appears to a prepared people. God appears to a prepared atmosphere. You see, you may have come here with so many worries and problems and concerns, but when you come prepared to worship God, you shift the atmosphere into a divine atmosphere of the anointing. You shift the atmosphere into an atmosphere of the anointing. When that atmosphere is present, there will be things that will be happening. God will be moving. God will be healing. God will be restoring. God will be breaking through for you. And God will be in your problems and settling your problems for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God appears to a prepared people. But I want, are there any intercessors here this morning? I need you all to pray for me because otherwise uh, I may be drifting away (laughs) everywhere. You know, there was a study carried out uh, in USA which discovered that we forget 90 to 95 percent of what we hear within 72 hours. That is why it is important to take notes. If I were to ask you this morning, do you remember what Pastor Clarence taught you last week? I'm sure only a few of you will be able to remember. (laughs) You know, that is because we are wired that way. That's the reason why when I, I'm, I'm 76 years today, I mean, I mean, not today, I mean, I'm 76 years. But you know, when I started uh, uh, in the ministry, I used to be very serious about taking notes, whoever preached before me. And I grew, I grew in the Lord. And uh, the, that was very important for me. Uh, if you want to grow and mature, mature in the kingdom of God, then you got to be serious about what you hear. Yes. Are you living in the kingdom of God? If you are living in the kingdom of God, you need to walk by faith and not by sight. If you want to build your life in the kingdom of God, you need to build it on the law of faith. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. Faith comes from hearing and hearing God's word. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing God's word. This morning, I want to speak to you on the subject of faith. You see, a lot of preachers will, uh, will preach about having faith in God. But only few will teach how faith works. Hallelujah. Uh, How many of you know that the gospel begins and ends with faith? 
Okay, listen to me. God is not going to be moved by your needs. Are you listening? God is not going to be moved by, no matter how great they are, but God will be moved by your faith. That's how powerful faith is. So, what is real faith? I know many of you may be thinking, I know all about faith in a nutshell. But you will be surprised to discover that faith is much deeper than your fundamental understanding of it. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us what faith is. Now, faith is the confidence of what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. As a Christian, we walk by faith and not by sight. And this is the greatest hope of a, of a Christian. No matter what is defining your life today, right now, the challenges that you may be facing, the various problems that you may be going through, the just shall walk by faith. The righteous people will walk by faith. We are the righteousness of God, as Pastor David that we was preaching this now. We are the righteousness of God. God has made us righteous. That's why we are able to participate in the Holy Communion today. So, so living by faith is a supernatural lifestyle. Okay? Living by faith is a supernatural. Unlike how the rest of the world lives. The world lives by believing in themselves. Uh, unfortunately, believing in their own strength and ability. But we live by faith in God. Uh, no matter what is happening our, around us, we believe our marriages work because of God. We believe our children are well because of God. We believe our business prosper because of God. We give glory to God in every area of our life. This is a marked difference between us and the rest of the people of the world. Basically, what faith means is that faith is seeing your life from God's point of view. Okay? Looking at things that concerns you from God's perspective. Or dealing with matters with your spiritual eyes rather than with your human senses. Are you following me so far? So on the other hand, what is not faith? Unbelief is not faith. Unbelief, doubt is the opposite of faith. What does unbelief produce? Uncertainty, doubt is the result, the fruit of all negativity. So on the other hand, faith isn't pretending, listen to me, faith isn't pretending when something is true when it's not. In other words, faith is not psyching yourself uh, up and believing something to be true when it's not real. For example, if I have a mango tree in front of my house and I keep saying it's an orange tree and not a mango tree, no matter how much of faith I have, it's not going to be an orange tree. Are you listening to me? Yes. It's still going to remain a mango tree. Is it making sense to you? Yes. Next, I'm going to say something here uh, this morning. Don't get me wrong. It's so appalling to see churches and ministry today drifting away towards a new trend. Okay? In other words, they are chasing after miracles they are chasing after prophecy. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not against miracles. I'm not against prophecy. However, I'm not excited about all these things because you know why? Number one, these things are not going to sustain you when you go through trouble. Number two, these things are... These things are going to be going, these things will naturally follow you 
when you put yourself in the right perspective with God. Hallelujah. When we are properly aligned to the kingdom of God, listen to me, when the fundamental principles, when the fundamental principles in the kingdom of God are placed in the right order in our lives, we are supposed to prosper in every area of our lives. We, we will see miracles, we will see healings, and we will see breakthroughs. Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, it is living by God's power. What is God's power? God's power is your overall well-being. So you see, the problem is that we have been focusing too much on certain trivial areas and we have ignored the fundamental teachings of God, which is the whole counsel of God. Uh, therefore, we need to come back to earth and ask ourselves, what is God telling us? that will enable you and I to walk across into our miracles, into our healings, and, and into signs and wonders daily. That is the total sum of our well-being in our life in Christ. Therefore, one of the things we need to understand very clearly this morning is that although it is undeniable, that faith can move mountains for you, but faith and miracles cannot be separated. Okay? Faith and miracles, it has got to go together in your life. The proportion of your faith will be the proportion of your miracles. Okay? But the problem with many of us is that we want miracles, we chase after miracles without faith. So what we are doing is we are chasing people instead of chasing God who is the source of all miracles. Are you understanding me this morning? So by behaving in this manner, we are riding on other people's faith for God. That's why you hear a lot of people ringing you and troubling Pastor Clarence all the time. Pastor pray for me, Pastor pray for me, Pastor pray for me. Because they think they don't have a right, you know, link with God. You see? So, please understand, faith is not something that is outside of you. You will be fooling yourself if you don't understand this basic concept, this basic principle. So, don't focus on people outside of God. So, don't write on other people's faith as well. Therefore, faith cannot be invented from outside. Faith is not science. It's not rocket science. In fact, faith defiles every logic and reason of science. Faith isn't a feeling either. It's not an emotion. We must not allow emotion and feeling to come into faith. Although sometimes it does affect us. So now, what, what you may ask me is, you tell, Pastor, you tell me what is faith. Okay, faith is a solid mindset, a belief system of total trust and commitment in God. It's a belief system developed and embedded in your mind, permeated and sinked into our heart and soul. So you may say, you may want to say, it's a supernatural gift. It's a supernatural gift of your born-again new nature. It's a supernatural gift. In fact, faith is a higher law that supersedes all other laws. It is a gift that God has given you when you became born again. Faith is a belief, a mindset that you never give up no matter what. Okay? It's a mindset that you never give up no matter what. Even when hell is breaking loose and, and demonic attacks are all around you and you are at the verge of losing your mind, you never give up. That's what faith is. You will never give up believing 
is never giving up. I don't care how long it takes for a situation to change. I will never give up. I will keep believing. Yeah. That is what faith is. No matter how disappointing and discouraging it may be, I will never give up. That is what faith is. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't care if people are not getting healed or people are dying or whatever it is. My faith is I will never give up. Yeah. That is what real faith is. Job is a very good example. You know, Job, he lost. He was a righteous man. Even God applauded him. And he, he was a very wealthy man. Not only wealthy, but he was a very righteous and upright man. And suddenly he lost 10 of his children. Overnight he lost all his wealth. And not only on top of it, he was afflicted with leprosy from top to bottom. And his wife came and told him, Hey, what kind of job, what kind of God you're worshipping? She so better curse God and die. You know what Job said? Naked I came into the world, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. At last he will stand upon the earth. And when my skin has been dust destroyed, then from my flesh I shall see God who will be on my side. Amen. That is what real faith is. That is what real trust is. Hallelujah. So, why is faith so important? The next question is, why is so faith so important in us? Because it is the very foundation of walk with God. It is our very foundation. It is the infrastructure of our whole life, like that of a strong building. Can you see that? Next, if your faith is as strong as the foundation of a strong building, then your faith can move mountains for you. Yeah. Now listen to me. Are you prepared to go to the next level? Okay? When you become a born-again Christian, God gave you the gift of faith to believe in Him. Therefore, God has given to each of us a certain measure of faith. I always tell people, God has given to each other, irrespective of who you are, He has given a certain measure of faith, irrespective of who you are. And it is for each of us to develop this measure of faith to different heights, different levels, different proportion. What is the measure of your faith? Your measure of faith is the level of your faith. What's the level of your faith? Your level of faith, uh, your level of faith is the proportion of your faith. Now listen to me. Your uh, mountain moving faith or your violent faith can unlock the miracles of God in your life. Amen. It will take you into the supernatural for a miracle to take place. Hallelujah. I got no time to go into uh, it detail in detail. That's one of the reasons why the devil loves to come and steal your faith. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The devil, the one thing that the devil will do is he wants to come and steal your faith. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, oftentimes you will notice he wants to steal your faith. And how does he do that? When you are vulnerable, when you are at your lowest point in your life, when you are hitting brick walls, that is when the enemy will come and hunt you down. He will, he will, he will tell his lies to you. Everything will be opposite of faith. And when you allow the devil to speak into your life, he will come, he will infiltrate your mind, and it will alter your mind. And that is how it does. And you will backslide. That is what you will do in troubled times. Okay? When you are going through a difficult time. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. What he does, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
Uh, it's a very powerful word. Number one, you see, he, you see, you need to know that God wants to reward you. You need to know that God wants to reward you to those who seek him earnestly. How can you seek him without faith? You need faith to seek him, right? So we having this, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, we having the same spirit of faith according, according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Faith is believing and speaking. Faith is what? Believing and speaking. When you do that, it opens a door to the supernatural. Yeah. Hallelujah. When faith originates from the inner man, okay, when faith originates from the inner man, it will overflow out of the mouth. Out of the mouth. If it really comes out of your soul, it will manifest out of your mouth. Now, what is described in the Bible is a faith made of, of two components, believing and speaking. Neither of it can stand alone. Neither of it can be separated to produce results or fruits. I don't speak to believe, I believe to speak. I don't speak to believe, I believe to speak. Faith works by speaking. So what you speak is what you will manifest in your life. Can you, can you understand what I'm saying to you? What you speak is what will manifest in your life. Can we go to the next step? Sometimes we need to stop praying. Don't, don't be uh, taken aback. Sometimes we need to stop praying over certain situations. Instead, start speaking with authority and power over some demonic and satanic powers. Hallelujah. That is what I interpret while I was sitting with, uh, having coffee with, uh, with what you call uh, Brother Pandian. Yeah. You know, you can get revelation from anybody. You know, you know that? He said, he said, he lifted me up. Thank you, my dear. We need to know when to pray and when to command and when to rebuke and speak to some demonic spirit that is driving you crazy. Hallelujah. Right. And not don't pray to the mountain all the time. You've got all a lot of problems on the mountain in front of you. God is saying, Pray, you don't pray to the mountain, you command the mountain. Right. You rebuke the mountain. Right. You know, when Moses, uh, Moses, uh, he, he brought the two million people. He was, he came to a place, there's no way for him to go. And Pharaoh was uh, uh, coming with his chariots, the army of chariots to kill him. And Moses was crying to God. And God said, why are you crying to me? Do what I tell you to do. Point your staff to the, uh, the, the direction of the sea. And he did that and the, uh, the, the, the sea opened for the people to cross over, okay? So sometimes we need to act, okay? You've got to speak to the rebellious spirit. You've got to take authority over them and speak the authority and power God has given you. You've got to know when to pray, when to command, and cast out the devil. Hallelujah. Because God has promised in uh, Matthew 28, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will be made well. This is the authority and power God has given us, and we need to exercise it. Yeah. Are you listening, yeah. my people? Okay, Matthew 12, 24, 34. Matthew 12, 34. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Speech reveals character. What's on the inside of you 
will manifest outside of you. You will know who you are in Christ when you speak with authority. Hallelujah. Otherwise, the devil will turn around and say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? And he will start beating you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Another thing, I, remember the Christian lie is a lie which is full of hope. And this is the most exciting part of a Christian. And your level of faith must be full of expectation and hope. If you are not expecting anything from God, then it's not real faith. It's not real faith. Believe me, God will meet you at the level of your faith. If there is a miracle that you are waiting for, there's a breakthrough that you are waiting for, your level of faith will be the one that will enable God to meet you. Faith must be followed by action. You see, James 2, 17, in the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. Faith without action is useless. There are certain people who have faith but fear to act. Listen very carefully. For example, some of us want to cross the river, but we are staring at the water instead. And you will keep staring for the rest of your life. This is a defensive attitude. It's not, uh, it's not faith. And one of the very common excuses they will give you every time is, Pastor, I've been waiting for God. I've been praying about it. God hasn't spoken to me yet. This is a very common excuse of fear mentality. Okay? For, uh, you see, here's what I, I want you to understand. Faith is not the absence of fear. Faith is despite the fear that you are willing to step forward. Yes, not stepping forward blindly, but stepping forward, knowing who you are stepping forward with. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is what real faith is. That is what real trust is. A very good example is Peter walking on the water in Matthew 14. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the lake, they were terrified. They, th they thought it is a ghost. And Jesus said, fear not, it is I. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter was bold enough to take the step forward and step in the water. The rest of the disciples were sitting frantically praying, praying in the, uh, in the boat, I guess. And Peter stepped in the water. The mindset is telling Peter, you can't make it. But faith is telling, you can make it. So when Peter stepped in the water, he, he realized that he could walk on the water. But the moment, the moment he, 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 he was fearful, the moment he became fearful, uh, he immediately started sinking. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, Jesus said. He said, why did you doubt? Doubt will produce fear and cripple you in your circumstances. What happened to the rest of the people? The rest of the people, the rest of the disciples saw no breakthrough. They remained where they were, perhaps praying in the boat religiously because of fear. Some of us are still sitting in the boat praying for too long, when we are supposed to act out our faith. Listen to me. There's a time to pray, there's a time to wait, and there's a time to move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. When you doubt, when you doubt, the moment you doubt, the enemy, you use the tool of fear. The tool of fear. Uh, to come in and your problems will get bigger. Hallelujah. What happens when we start to see our circumstances with the eyes of faith? 
the impossible becomes possible. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? When we see our circumstances with the eyes of faith, the impossible becomes possible. All things are possible with God. You remember Moses sent 12 people to go and spy the land, the promised land. Ten of them came back. They said, yes, Moses, it's a, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a rich land. Come on. He, they even brought some of the fruits and vegetables and showed Moses. But they said, you know what? We cannot take the land. There are the Amalekites there, the giants there. We are like grasshoppers. You know, that is a fear mentality. Not only a slave mentality, but a fear mentality. They have been living in, in Egypt for so many years. And they have been, they've been under the taskmasters of the Egyptians. And they have built up this kind of fierce slave mentality of fear. But Caleb and, and Joshua said, they were full of faith. They said, if God has said that, we can go in and conquer the land. You see, the people who have faith will be able to conquer the promised land. A person of faith will possess the promised land, but a person of fear will keep wandering around the wilderness for 40 years without going anywhere. Hallelujah. They talk about fear and try to influence others. I want to give you seven keys. Do I have time? Okay. Seven keys to raise your faith level this morning. Very quickly, I want to give you. Number one, the level of my faith diminishes my problem. The level of my faith diminishes my problem. Okay. When you see your problem in God's point of view, your problems quickly diminishes and becomes smaller. When you see your problem from God's point of view, everything becomes manageable. Everything becomes under control. When you understand that your God is a big God, your problems get smaller. When you see your God as a small God, your problems get bigger. When your God is a big and powerful God, you can cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. First Peter 5, 7. Now, what happens when you cast all your cares upon him? Your problem is no longer your problem anymore. Instead, your problem becomes God's problem. And the result is you can rest in peace. You don't have to be unduly worried anymore. Can you see that, my people? Uh, Genesis 18, 14. Genesis 18, verse 14 says, Is anything too hard for me? He is a God of impossibilities. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And then in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, Nothing is impossible with God. You see, remember, those who put everything in God's hand, eventually will see God's hand in everything, in all your problems. Number two, faith opens the door for a miracle. Okay? Faith, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received, and it will be yours. Faith can move mountains for you. Mountains are the problems you face in your daily life. Okay, every time Jesus performed a miracle, listen to me, every time Jesus performed a miracle, there was somebody in the midst to draw the miracle from him. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There was somebody in the midst, the woman with the issue of blood. There were 5,000 people throwing Jesus. 
He said, who touched me? The disciples said, what are you talking? He said, there are so many people touching you. But there was one person there who had the faith level to draw the miracle from him. He said, no. He said, somebody touched me. My power has been drawn away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is, that is how faith works, you know. Hallelujah. God wants you to experience miracles and breakthroughs in your life. But you need to draw the miracle by the level of your faith. Hallelujah. By the way, how many of you know why miracles take place? Scientifically. Hallelujah. Do you know that the law of faith is a higher law than the law of nature? That's one of the reasons why miracles take place. God has set up this system of laws in the universe that the law of faith is a higher law than even the law of physics. The law of faith can actually do more than the law of physics. The question i like to ask you today, does God do miracles today? Yes. There are some churches teaching that God doesn't do miracles anymore. Of course he does, because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The word of God is backing us that he is an unchanging God. Forever and ever you will be the same God. Hallelujah. Every time you are willing to stretch your faith, God will do miracles for you. Every time you have that measure of faith in you, God does miracles. The problem is sometimes we make God look so small. Hallelujah. Because of our small mentality. God is unlike us. God wants to work miracles through the law of faith, superseding the law of nature. You know what? God is in the mountain moving business, my friend. Uh, your measure of, please understand that but you must not doubt. You must not feed yourself with the devil's lies. Your measure of faith opens the door to work miracles. Your measure of faith opens the bridge to walk across into your miracles. You know what? Jesus was unable to perform miracles in his own hometown. The Bible says very clearly. And what was the reason? Because of lack of faith. Because of lack of faith of the people, they thought he was a carpenter's son. He can do nothing. And therefore nothing happened. Okay? So you may be wondering this morning, how come I've been faithfully coming to church? I've been serving, to church, serving in church. I've been tithing. I've been giving. But I've never seen any miracles in my life. I've never seen any breakthroughs in my life. But I want to ask you this morning, are you seeing your circumstances with the eyes of faith? Are you seeing the eyes, your circumstances with the eyes of your five senses? You see, you can talk so much about faith, you can give all the testimonies in church, but the next moment you can go off and do something which is entirely opposite of faith. You see, this is why many Christians are defeated in life. Are we seeing with our human eyes, which only produces defeat, fear, and certainty? Number three, faith moves God to act on my behalf. The problem with many of us is we have a poor image of God. We have limited God. That's because we have brought him down to our level of thinking and understanding. We have developed a wrong concept of God. Okay, remember God is no man's debtor. God doesn't owe anybody anything. All he had, he gave for you on the cross of Calvary. God is not your servant that you can manipulate, twist his arm around and get him to do whatever you want. God is not your bargaining tool. You cannot trade with God. 
God is God. He wants to do what he wants to do. God is moved by, God is not moved by your complaining and murmuring. None of this moves God. But you know what? God is moved by your faith. God is moved by the measure of your faith. However, despite who God is, He's a God who cares for you because He is a compassionate God. He's a merciful God. He is a loving God. He's a forgiving God. Isn't our God an awesome God? Hallelujah. Faith unlocks all the promises of God. Number four, faith unlocks, unlocks all the promises. How many of you know there are 7,000 promises in the Bible? And you and I, who are walking by faith, we are supposed to inherit the promises of God. We are supposed to walk in the promises of God. No matter how many promises, 2 Corinthians 2.20 says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes and amen in Christ. Hallelujah. They are all yes and amen in God. Number five, faith turns God's given dreams into reality. How many of you have a dream which is yet to be given birth? Can I ask something from you this morning? Listen to me. Nothing happens without a dream. Your future belongs to a, your future belongs to your dream. You would have noticed all the great men of God, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Daniel, and Paul, David, they all had a dream which was to be fulfilled in the future. Some of them saw the dream come through. Therefore, I want to challenge you this morning to dream for whatever God has placed in your heart. Dream for whatever God has placed in your heart for your future. Keep watering your dream. Keep fertilizing your dream. Amen. Hallelujah. And have faith to believe. It will come through for you. God is faithful. He will see your dream come through for you. You know what? We limit God by our unbelief. God is able to do much more than we ask for. Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly, much more than what we ask for. Exceedingly far more than we could dream of, we could ask of. Okay? Hallelujah. Number six, faith gives the strength and power to hang on in tough times. Come on. It's very important. Here's what you need to know to understand Faith don't take you out of your problem. Faith often takes you through your problem. Amen. Please understand this principle. Amen. Faith will not take you out of your pain. Faith gives you the ability to sustain the pain. Yes. Hallelujah. Faith gives you the capacity to handle the pain. Please understand. Faith will not bring heaven down to you, my friend. Please believe this. We live in a fallen world. In this world, you will always face problems. In this world, you will always have pain. In this world, you will always have challenges. You will always face mountains. You will always face storms. But faith will give you the strength to handle these troubles. It doesn't take you out of the storm. It will take you through the storm. God will go through with you in your pain. God will go through with you in your storm. At the end of the day, he will turn it around for good. Hallelujah. You know what? Okay. Last point I want to tell you. Last point. Hallelujah. What is the last point? Faith gives you the ability to bounce back, rise up, and fight again. Amen. There is an inborn quality wired in born again Christians that God has put into us. You know, during the Nazi, uh, uh, what do you call the Holocaust? Six million Jews eliminated. The Nazi brutality in the camps, the prison camps, was so 
uh, humanly, it was unbelievable, the kind of atrocities and torture. But the people who did not have faith perished very quickly. They did not have the will to live. But the people who had faith survived the brutality. And they were, they were able to quickly recover from the hurts and the pain and the rejection. And they were able to bounce back and fight again. And that is Israel today. Can you, can you imagine that? God has wired us with that kind of strength in us. Study after study have shown that resilience, the capacity, the ability to bounce back was one of the major players, one of the major characteristics built in a person that gives one the capacity to quickly recover from tough difficulties, deep hurts, deep pain, rejection, to bounce back, rise up, and move forward, and fight again. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah.